What's going on guys, it's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day today. Now, as the Bitcoin price remains quite boring, we are consolidating, we are going sideways. I am expecting some type of a big move, potentially by mid next week. But even though the price is boring, the news certainly has not been boring. I mean, this has been some of the craziest things we've seen come out of crypto in a long time, and I'm gonna keep pressing this, but one of the most important things that we need to pay attention to is this Genesis lending issue, right? Now, I did make a mistake. I actually wanna correct this. So I thought that it was Monday, as in the previous Monday that they needed. I guess it's actually the upcoming Monday. So I don't know, I guess that's kind of good news. Are these guys gonna actually be able to raise a billion dollars in about a day and a half? I'm not too sure about that, but we do have Genesis Holdings Company, the digital currency group being rumored to potentially also be having a liquidity crunch. Now, this may not seem like a big deal to you, and I'm not trying to spread FUD. I'm just letting you know what some people are saying, okay? And, you know, if this does turn out to be an issue on Monday and, you know, the digital currency group is having an issue, what does that mean? Because don't forget, they have the product, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. They are one of the biggest uh, holders in that. And some people are saying if GBDC did in fact, or, you know, Grayscale, you know, had a liquidation that it could ultimately unleash, and this is their words, not mine, a Bitcoin Armageddon, okay? So that's what I want to talk about today. But don't think that today's video is just about FUD. I actually have some good news as well. We have a major, major player looking to actually get into the Bitcoin space. Some of these guys are seeing Seeing these prices, and even with all the stuff that's happened with FTX, it is enticing them to get involved. And some of these VC hedge funds are actually buying right now. I could also show you more evidence. And once again, if you're wondering why it's not being reflected into the chart, well, that's where OTC comes in, right? So we're going to talk about all that. Also, we're going to talk about the estimated 1.2 million Bitcoin that potentially are lost forever through hacks like, you know, Mt. Gox and, and, and things like what happened with FTX. And finally, speaking of FTX, there is some more news. I'm going to put it at the end of today's video. I think we're a little tired of it, but now their lawyer, their lawyers are basically, uh, you know, stepping out saying that they're terminating their representation due to conflicts of interest. So the situation just keeps getting crazier guys, but we're going to dive into all that today. If that sounds good to you, you know what to do. If you're not subscribed, definitely consider it. And I just want to throw this out to you. So I had this tweet on Twitter. It had 1,725 votes. And I want to hear you guys, because not everybody's always on Twitter. If you could only hold one for the next five years, what would you choose? Bitcoin, Ethereum, gold, or US dollars? I obviously only had slots for four. We could have listed it forever. Or do you think that you know, some other token or coin would be something that you would hold. By the way, it was 69% Bitcoin. So kind of just shows you where everyone's head is right now. Okay. So let's dive into the chart super quick. Uh, I don't really want to spend a lot of time on here. Nothing has changed. Watch my previous two videos. Ultimately, what we're looking to do is to break above this resistance right here, sitting at around 16,830. And our level of support is around 16,192. So those are the levels. What happens if we can break to the upside? Well, the next level of resistance is right here, which I just moved <laughs> at around 17,643. And the next area, as you can see right here is around 18,000 even. And obviously if we fall to the downside, there is this area down here. Obviously we can put in a double bottom. The next area, very, very weak support. I wouldn't count on it is around 15,248. And unfortunately, then we do have that big $13,800 level, right? Currently the markets are indecisive. They don't know which way they want to go right now. We just have to see what happens as this breaks, right? So once we get a move either to the upside or the downside, and then we get some kind of a, a bounce off resistance support, then I think we can start, you know, taking the trades again. Right now it's a little bit risky, you're kind of just guessing which way it's going to break. It's been consolidating for so long. And technically, just to go back, it, it you know, if you really want to be, you know, realistic about it, this technically is a bear flag, okay? Doesn't mean it has to break to the downside, but technically, that's what it is. Actually, it's a bear pennant. So... Let's talk about a few things. Now, plan B, first of all, the, the stock to flow is just way off. Some people are saying that this is just a failed model. It's not going to work because as you can see right here, the price of Bitcoin, according to this, should be somewhere around $75,000 as of this time, and currently we're very far off that, but plan B goes on to say that it's probably just a small blip on the long-term radar. Now, one thing I want to point out, this is a historical chart, the Bitcoin rainbow chart. If you, this, this chart was created before I even got into Bitcoin, right? Very legacy chart. And you could see that every single time we come down into the bottom of this area, it presents a very, very good opportun opportunity for buying. You can see 
right here. They say it's basically a fire sale. Well, with the exception of this little, little tiny dip right here on the COVID crash, this is one of the first times we've ever fallen below it and actually stayed below it at this current price, right? So that is something to just point out, which, I mean, you can say what you want about it. You could say, oh, this, this is terrible. The structure has broken. Fair enough. But once again, as far as dollar cost averaging is concerned, this literally is, I mean, you, you really can't ask for a better price than this. Okay, maybe we go to 10,000. But I mean, you're talking about data going all the way back here, you know, to 2012, basically. And yeah, I mean, th these opportunities, they don't come that often. So are they buying the dip? Well, Pantera has bought 150 million. It says their fund has bought 137 million worth of Bitcoin, according to Matthew Gorham, its chief operating officer, 141 accredited investors with a minimum investment of 50,000 each. So coming over here, this is pretty big news. So I'm trying to get away from the FUD. I want to, there is a little bit of FUD. There is a little, you know, we'll get to that, but I think this is positive news and I wanted to share it. So we have Man Group Limited, okay? They're planning to start a crypto hedge fund while the market is yet to heal from the recent FTX turmoil. Now, you might say, well, why should we care? Who is this? Well, the Man Group has over $97 billion in assets under management. It is also listed on the London Stock Exchange, which makes it the world's largest publicly traded hedge fund. So according to a Bloomberg report, Man Group is developing a strategy for a dedicated cryptocurrency hedge fund, and the fund may start trading as soon as the end of this year. So this is potentially good, right? They might be wanting to get some more exposure. These guys are massive in the space. And also you can see right here, they say, despite the bearish sentiments, institutional and venture capital money continues to flow into the crypto market. While many await regulatory clarifications, which I do think regulations is sort of what's going to bring in the tidal wave of money, unfortunately, right? And, you know, the thing is, is Bitcoin will still remain as it is, right? Just because we have regulators coming in doesn't mean that you can't still use Bitcoin the way that you want to use it in a decentralized way. It's just once we get that regulation, especially for the exchanges coming in, you're going to see a lot of these big players literally pouring capital. They are waiting right now. But the thing is, is without this certainty... What are they supposed to tell their clients, especially when they're handling massive amounts of money, right? They can't just be like, oh, well, it's unregulated, but, uh, you know, let's just throw some money in there, right? Look what happened with FTX. Imagine if you were a hedge fund, a manager of other people's um, funds, and that happened. I mean, that would just be devastating, right? I bet it did happen to some of them, right? The most recent announcement comes from also a Japanese bank, Nomura, one of the largest banks in Japan, which will provide facilities for institutional clients to trade cryptocurrencies by early 2023. So obviously, if the space was dead, if Bitcoin was dead, and you know the whole crypto sector was just going under, we wouldn't see these types of actions from these players, right? All right, guys. That's enough good news for today. Now we got to talk about we got to talk about more of this fud, right? So Dylan LeClaire was responding to a tweet from uh, Ryan Selkis. He goes by Two Bit Idiot, and it says Genesis Holding Company Digital Currency Group, the issuer of GBTC, is experiencing a liquidity crunch. Appears holding companies' liquid assets are below liabilities. As a result, it looks like DCG is looking to raise outside funding, and then the tweet was deleted. Very. Interesting. Why was this tweet really deleted? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know why it was deleted, but let's talk. So you can see right, and this is this this is the article, by the way. This is where I'm getting this headline from. You can see right here. Grayscale liquidation could unleash a Bitcoin Armageddon. So I'm just taking it from this article. And what are they saying? As a result of the bankruptcy of SBF's crypto exchange, the discount to the net asset value of Grayscale's GBDC fund has fallen to negative 40%. Now, to put that into perspective, at the end of 2020, it was trading at a premium of positive 40%. However, in January, the trend reversal occurred when Grayscale's Bitcoin fund traded at a discount for the first time. Since then, you can see right here, it's obviously just been on a downslide. So they say doomsday for Bitcoin. This is the concern for Grayscale Bitcoin Trust in that Genesis Global served as the liquidity provider for that trust. Genesis Global parent company is Digital Currency Group. This, in turn, is also the parent company of Grayscale. So shortly after the Genesis announcement, Digital Cur Currency Group clarified that the matter would have no impact on its own business. They stated that Genesis is not a service provider. Grayscale products continue to operate business as usual, and recent events have had no impact. The assets underlying GBTC and all Grayscale products remain safe and secure 
held in segregated wallets in deep cold storage by our custodian Coinbase. Okay, so well, let me finish this. They say uh, a dissolution of GBTC could mean Armageddon for Bitcoin. The Grayscale Bitcoin Trust currently holds about 634,000 Bitcoin. Now, just to put this into perspective, 634,000 Bitcoin, okay? So the Terra Luna Foundation only liquidated about 80,000 Bitcoin and still managed to crash the price from 40,000 to 20,000. So now we're not talking about 80,000 Bitcoin. We're talking about 634,000 Bitcoin. Would they have to liquidate that? Would that have to get flooded on the market, right? Well, this is where it all ties into this sort of web, the contagion, right? So we have Genesis having exposure to FTX, but the parent company is Digital Currency Group, who runs essentially the Grayscale GBTC Bitcoin Fund, who uses Coinbase as their storage custodian. So do you see how all this crazy web is tied into each other? This is the scary part about this, right? And as I said, you know, Terra Luna dumped 80,000 and they were able to move the price from 40 to 20. Now we're talking 634. Now I highly doubt that they would liquidate their entire stash if they even have to do it at all. But just to break it down, you could see their positions and their percentage here. 4% digital currency group. Some other big players include ARK Investment. And for all my conspiracy theorists out there, we also have the Rothschild Investment Corp coming in at a whopping seventh highest um, you know, holder. Now, this guy, Joe Consorti, he did a very long tweet. I'm not going to go into it, because, it's, but I do recommend you check this out, uh, this tweet from Joe Consorti. Maybe I'll retweet it over on my Twitter if you guys are following me. But he says, as GBDC has been dumped by institutions all year long, DCG has chosen to pick up the bag, right? So they're now coming out and Barry Silbert is saying they're actually willing to buy some of this, right? Which is like the opposite. Rather than liquidating it, they're saying we're going to buy it, right? Just keep in mind, keep in mind all the players that have been pushed out of the space. You know, people say, oh, we haven't seen capitulation. Look, I'm not saying that we can't have another quick wick. I don't know, maybe we do go to 10,000. You know, I think anything at this point is possible. If you asked me a year ago, I would have said that, no way. How could that happen? Well, <laughs> look at what was going on in the background. You know, once you find out what these guys were doing, well, obviously this changes things a little bit. So we have three hours capital. They dumped 100% of their bags. BlockFi, they dumped 100% of their bags. So, you know, pointing out that these guys are the biggest holders could be something of concern. And, you know, like Dylan LeClaire pointed out again in response, he says, does anyone know the address of the Bitcoin in GBTC? Are there some form of proof of reserves? And if no, why? We have a fully transparent public ledger so we can audit this stuff. All I can find is a, a, a CSV file that updates daily. Why not publish the addresses? I say this as someone without exposure. I'm just curious. Um, you know, they are on Coinbase custody, but like we have a transparent ledger. It's the most basic thing ever to literally just post addresses and sign with your keys to prove it's you, uh, you know. So yeah, I think that you know, moving forward, if uh, exchange cannot provide proof of reserves or better yet, proof of keys, then I don't think we should really be trusting them. Or if you are trusting them, then at least you know, you know what the deal is. But as I've been saying, guys, you know, get your coins off the exchange if you're not using it. And if you're a longtime follower, I don't, I don't do it anymore. But if you guys remember, we used to give away a ledger every single week on this channel. Um, maybe I'll bring it back because of these crazy times. You want me to bring back the ledger giveaway? Um, you know, we just did it for fun. Really, it was just for engagement, let's be honest. But ultimately, it was also my way of trying to be like, hey guys, you know, you gotta put your coins, you know, on cold storage. I've always been an advocate of that if you're not trading. So speaking about the FTX debacle, if you've made it this far and you're still interested, turns out that the Bahamas liquidators discovered possibilities of fraud from FTX. You don't say, you don't say. By the way, guys, I just wanna point out this kind of funny thing right here. So Maxine Waters is apparently holding a hearing into the FTX collapse. You could see that she took a picture with Sam here, but you know, even crazier than that, you could see her right here back in 2021, actually blowing him a kiss, saying goodbye to Sam. I'll see you later, Sam. So we know that these guys are all in bed with each other. This was obviously some kind of a planned operation. You know, the dominoes are falling and even the lawyers want nothing to do with it. Paul Weiss, the law firm backing FTX, Sam Bankman-Fried amid bankruptcy, renounced representing the entrepreneur 
citing a conflict of interest. The decision was uh, to withdraw from re representation was pretty much after he did all those stupid cryptic tweets and they said that this really screwed up their reorganization efforts. So, you know, he published a series of tweets um, but you know, now they're, they're, they're saying that the idea was that he was trying to like trick the bots or something like that. Um, and, and get people to look at his cryptic tweets while he was doing all this tweet deleting in the background, trying to keep the ratio even one-to-one, -one, like putting this tweet, you know, H and then deleting another tweet. You see what I'm saying? So they say, we informed Mr. Bankman several days ago after the filings of the bankruptcy that conflicts have arisen that precluded us from representing him. So who's going to represent them now <laughs> that, uh, the law firm the whole law firm backing them is, is no longer interested. So that's crazy. And what's even crazier is that Shark Tank's Kevin O'Leary has come out and said that, number one, he would be willing to give Sam a second chance. I don't know if that's just because he lost all this money and he's trying to be nice and get it back. But he also pointed out that he would still continue to keep assets on a crypto exchange despite the recent failure of FTX. Of, of course, now he says we need to look to something regulated. And here's his reasoning. And he does make a good point, you know. As I promote not your keys, not your coins to you guys, and this is what we preach, at the end of the day, institutions and big players and, you know, family offices and even sovereign wealth funds, they don't want the responsibility of holding their own keys. I know that that's the ethos of Bitcoin. I know that that's what we preach, but they don't want to do it. They want to do the same thing that they do out in the real world, where they just turn their keys, their assets over to somebody else who's trusted FDIC insured, you know, audited regularly, and you deal with it. Now, the reason that he says that they do that, he declared that cold storage does not provide the kind of liquidity they would need for a daily running of their operations. He said that these assets must be available for trading at all times in order to remain on side of their diversified mandate. And if they have to adjust their books and do reporting, they can't be going through that extra step of putting it in cold storage. Now, this is not like a promotion to take your coins and put them back on the exchange, but I understand where they're coming from, especially when you need to move a lot of funds in and out very quick in a volatile market, right? So I can kind of understand where he's coming from, but this is the interesting thing. So with the exception of that really freak Bitcoin uh, deposit into Binance that we talked about yesterday, which I still don't really 100% know where the funds came from, I haven't seen any data, if you know the answer to this, please drop the comment below. I would love to know if you know where all that Bitcoin came from. But with the exception of Binance, we've seen pretty much every other exchange losing massive quantities of Bitcoin, as in they're being withdrawn, potentially being put into cold storage. What's interesting is crypto exchanges over the last decade have permanently taken out about 5.7 Bitcoin or about 1.2 million. You can see right here. They say historical data around crypto crashes reveals that 14 crypto exchanges together were responsible for the loss of 1.2 uh, million Bitcoin. They say 5.7% 5, 5 up here. It says 6.3% over here. I don't know which number is correct. But my point being, it's 1.2 million Bitcoin that um, maybe isn't out of the circulation forever. I mean, you know, clearly somebody somewhere has these Bitcoin, but are they lost? Are they on hardware? You know, are they on cold storage? Are they on you know, laptops that people threw out, um, you know, Mt. Gox has 650,000. Um, so yeah, but you know, the other thing too is it, it is interesting because if you look at the percentage of volume that we were doing, we were doing over a billion in 24 hour, uh, you know, volume for Bitcoin, but keep in mind that it could just be the same Bitcoin trading over and over and over again, right? You could have a, a billion, you could have a, a volume of, I don't know, a billion Bitcoin, but it could really just be like, 500,000 Bitcoin that just keeps getting traded. You know what I mean? Like it could be the same Bitcoin being recycled over and over again. Um, but nevertheless, guys, this does create an issue where the demand for Bitcoin, should it ever get bigger, which I think it will, especially with the regulation, there's a lot less Bitcoin than even Satoshi had anticipated. In fact, Satoshi, he's got his wallet. The, you know, it's estimated that about 5 million Bitcoin, four to five at this point could be totally potentially lost forever. But nevertheless, guys, Naib Bukele says, we are buying one Bitcoin every day starting tomorrow, and that was two days ago. So it looks like El Salvador will continue buying Bitcoin. So 
that's it for me, guys. Thank you for coming back to the channel. Also, I just wanted to throw out the um, Decentral Miami is happening. I still haven't bought my tickets yet. I was thinking about going. I'm not sure. Is anyone going to be there? Does anybody want to go? Um, they do have me crazy up for uh, awards if you guys do want to vote for me. You don't have to. Honestly, I don't think I'm going to win against guys like Altcoin Daily. I mean, let's be honest. Those guys are amazing. Um, but yeah, I mean, as you guys could see, I, I, I was the winner for three years straight in Best Variety Show. So if you guys are interested, you know, you want to cast your vote, that will be down below. And then, of course, they do have me up against um, Altcoin Daily, Crypto Mason, Wendy O, Hit Network, Paul Barron, and Crypto Stash. So if you guys do want to vote, although I do have an, I do have pretty much a hunch that Altcoin Daily is probably going to take this one. But they're good guys. I like those guys. But if you are going to be there, let me know. Should I go to Miami? I'll buy a ticket. I'll see you guys there. If not, let me know. That's the week of the 28th whatever that is through that. So ultimately, guys, like I said, not too much going on in the Bitcoin chart. We're just waiting and uh, it's probably going to be boring. And honestly, if we get a big move tomorrow, I won't trust it anyway. I don't trust moves on weekends for obvious reasons, but that's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. You guys rock. You're the reason that I make these videos. Also, um, if you haven't checked out my TikTok, uh, thank you for those who have subscribed. I did post an exclusive video that's only over there on TikTok. I purposefully did not put it on YouTube. You know, so maybe you guys want to go check it out. But until next time, guys, thank you so much for coming back to the channel. I love you. You're awesome. You rock. Um, you know, you give me purpose. You give me reason to wake up every day. You know, or else I'd be, just be talking to myself here. So you guys rock. And, you know, obviously, if you are looking to trade or if you are looking how to get your crypto on a cold storage wallet, I highly recommend that you check these videos popping up right here, right now. Until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out.